Wingspan on Valley Sports is presented by Coors Light, made to chill. Now you're going to get that on camera? Hold it right. Yeah, come on. Have some fun with it. What's that for? It's just it's, it's a, how we get started. Whenever you're ready. Grace, I won't let now. Oh, hey. So you can say you clap and say action. Go ahead. Action. Scotty Bowman, one of the greatest coaches to ever do it in the NHL. Nine Stanley Cups from the bench. Five more as an executive. And forever a legend here in Detroit. Here's to the maestro. Let's go uh, way back. You started in Montreal. Were you born in Montreal, in, in Montreal City? Yeah, I, I, Verdun, it's a suburb. Right. Yeah, right. I, I played uh, minor hockey in Verdun, and then I, I graduated to play junior hockey in, uh, with the Canadians. So at, w at what point in your career uh, did, you, did you get to before you had the injury? I was playing junior A. I was uh, on the third line. I was a 16-year-old, but I was always fearful of somebody was going to hit me with sure. a stick again. And uh, yeah. so they, he said, um, they were very fair. They said, if you, if you want to go and coach in your hometown, the parks teams, it was outside hockey, uh, we'll give you a chance to go to, go to either university wow. or a business course. Well, I, I wasn't really interested in going out four years. Right. To, but I took a business course, and, yeah. and they paid for it. And then I got a job. I, I had different jobs. I, were, I got a job with a paint company. And I was coaching the, the, the Bantam and Midget team in my hometown. And then a junior B team, an independent team, uh, needed a coach. And I went in there. I was only 19. So did you take the coaching right away? Did you really enjoy just being, being in the game, staying in the well, game? Well, you know, Mickey, the, the time I really took to coaching, and it was in your hometown, um, I went to Peterborough. Uh, they they eleva elevated me and gave me head coaching job in Peterborough. Right. I was 25. What year was that? 68. Uh, 58. Three. No, no, 58, and uh, that, and then I, Toronto trained there. Toronto Maple right. Leafs trained there. Yes, they did. And they trained for six weeks, and, uh, yeah. and somehow I don't know if it was, I think it was Bert Olmsted who had played for Montreal, and I he kind of knew me from junior days. He, you know, he, I didn't. I, I used to meet him, meet all the players around the Forum Coffee Shop. You would know where that sure. is, I'm sure. Sure. So the players would go there after practice. But anyways, he he introduced me to Punch Imlac. And uh, Punch was a wonderful man. Even though I was with Montreal, and he's, of course, running Toronto, I had lunch with him. I played golf a couple of times. Yeah. And, uh, you know, he, he, and I was coaching the Peets, and I, I, I was always inquisitive. I asked him a lot of questions about, and he was a good, he was a terrific coach. You know, and then that, I got lucky because when I, when I went back with, uh, with junior Canadians to coach them a few years later, I got to know Toe Blake. So I was able to meet him all. Yeah, yeah. I had, they were really so, good coaches. So let me take you back to Peterborough just briefly. When I was your stick boy in about, I'm thinking it's 1963-ish. I think you were about 14. Uh, you remember what you paid me? No, we did a dollar or two. I don't know. A <laughs> couple of bucks a game. <laughs> yeah, and well, that was I, great. But see, I, your dad was on the board. Right. And, uh, right. and I was 25 or 26. Oh, my gosh. And uh, he would take me out after the game. but you, I. You I, gave me a stick. And two bucks. And I, I think I valued the stick more than I did the two bucks. Well, yeah. I, I still tell people the story. I said, your dad asked me, he said, you know, do you mind if Mickey comes out and, and, and practices the odd time? So what you used to do, you'd come out for the skate at the beginning, and then we had the shooting drills, and then you'd wait. And then after the shooting drills, after a regular practice, we'd stay out for some of them to shoot, and you shot again. And I always told people, I said, Mickey Redmond's about 14, going on 15, and by the end of the year, he had a better shot than most of our juniors. <laughs> How did the big break come to go to the St. Louis Blues and, and so on after that? Well, uh, when I coached junior Canadians, we had two American boys that came up. American boys didn't play much in, in the uh, Canadian Junior League, right. but Lynn Patrick, who had run the Bruins for a long time, 
sent his son, Craig Patrick. So I, Lynn would come, especially if Boston was playing. Uh, he'd, he saw us play a few times. And then when the league expanded with the six expansion teams, Lynn was the general manager, and, and he made arrangements. I had another year left on my contract. So he went to Sam Pollock and said, look, it's a chance to be in the NHL. Now, St. Louis, great run there for a bunch of years. And next thing you know, you're back in Montreal. Um, and boy, you guys just lit it up there in Montreal, eh? The game is over. Canadians have won the Stanley Cup. The first year I got there, they'd won the Cup the year before. They were probably the third best team in the league. But we were really fortunate in Montreal because Sam Pollock, we had a lot of players, and he, he, was, he made trades with some of them with owners like in LA, like Jack Kent Cook, and, and, he, and he got draft picks. And you know, the first one, of course, was you know the story about Guy Lafleur. Lafleur, sure. And uh, and Sam, Sam uh, wanted him so bad, and the first pick overall. And then the second year, Steve shot maybe the third pick overall. And then the next year uh, um, was '73, and we dra uh, that was Claude Ruel again. They said, what a scout he was. And he drafted Bob Gainey from Peterborough. Mm -hmm. And he only had 15 goals in junior. But he knew that was the kind of player we needed because we were getting a lot of skilled players, but we needed some good defensive, aggressive guys. And Bob was a strong player. It's, it's interesting that you mentioned that because, and we'll get to it in a minute, but that's exactly what we seemed to need back in 97 and 98 to put us over the top with guys like Bob Gainey. But we'll get to that in a moment. Sure. So you spent some time in... in in Montreal, great success there. Yeah. You end up where Punch was in Buffalo for, for a bit with the, did you have the French connection there in Buffalo? No. They I, were gone. I, just at the beginning. Yeah. And then we yeah. we traded René Robert. He was uh, sliding a bit, but we wanted a couple of defense. We got a couple of defensemen, yeah. but no, that was a tough call for me because, you know, I went home to Montreal. My parents were both living. I had a brother, two brothers and a sister, but, uh, I, you know, I had a chance to, to get a, a big job with Buffalo, being manager, coach. Sure. Had four, four or five young ones around. So uh, I, I was worried in Montreal. I knew how important Sam Pollock was. And he retired the year, like our fourth cup in a row. He wasn't, he wasn't the manager, but all his players. And then I, I was always worried that when he goes, who's going to replace him, you know? And I still feel if... If they would have brought in a, a Nemo Francis or a, or a Harry Sinden, you know, some experienced general manager, yeah. that when you're a, when you're a coach, it doesn't matter if you're just coaching. You're also at the hands of players. You're not going to be a good coach if you don't have good players. And the manager and the scouting staff have to get the players. Right. Because you're coaching, you don't you don't pick any players. You know, Mickey, you can do your lineup. Sure. Yeah. So. I went to Buffalo. We, we we were pretty good the first year. We went from seventh overall to it was a team that was getting older, but it had some good players, like you mentioned, Rick Martin. Sure. Uh, we had a good defense. We had two big defensemen, Jerry Korob and and Jim Schoenfeld. Sure. We had pretty good goaltending, but we never had the players you need to round out the team. We never had those experience. You know, Mickey, you, sure. you try to win with young players. Maybe now there are teams that are doing it a little more because you get the pick of the, of the ball. But we got 99 or 100 points. Yeah. But we never did anything in the playoffs. Yeah. And then I, I left them. I was coaching and managing, and I left the coaching a couple of times. And actually, Mickey, I, I didn't get fired as Buffalo as much as people think. I got fired because I wouldn't coach. I went in one day and I said, I can't coach anymore. I want to build this team. And they said, if you don't coach, you can't stay. So that was and That the opened end. the door for Pittsburgh. Bob Johnson went to, uh, to uh, Pittsburgh. And before he went, Craig Patrick called me and said, Bob's going to be the coach. Would you mind, would you want to come here and, you know, help us get players and uh, be like director of personnel? And uh, Bob was a wonderful coach, the late Bob Johnson. Yeah. He, but he had a terrible type of cancer. Yeah. He didn't, he, I think it was around Thanksgiving of that year that he passed away. And I was coaching interim. Craig said, I don't like to put a young coach in here. Would you like to coach, you know, uh, the rest of the year? I said, well, I couldn't say no, really. Next year, I, my contract was up and Jimmy DeVolano called me. 
and said, uh, do you want to interview or do you want to come to Detroit? And I was a little, little I, was, I was upset at some things in Pittsburgh, what happened to me about my contract. So I, I decided to do that. That was the best move I ever made. Three seconds left, into the zone, the Detroit Red Wings and the Stanley Cup champions! Wingspan on Valley Sports is presented by Coors Light, made to chill. Scotty and Kenny Holland, they know how to build a team and they know what they need on that team to be successful. And they went out and got those pieces. And to have the longevity that they've had with this organization is remarkable. Knowing how to, to motivate players, uh, but his overall smartness of knowing how to match up against the other teams. Always have the other coach second guessing what he's gonna do. He just knew the game and he wasn't, he wasn't a follower. If something worked, he, he wasn't afraid to follow. Um, but if he wanted to do something different, no one had been doing that yet. He also wasn't afraid to like make that call and probably a year or two later, the rest of the NHL would be copying him. When that call came from Jimmy D, what allows you to make the decision to say, I'm going? I didn't know a lot of, we didn't play them, they're in the other, but, but I, I knew that they were a team on the rise. I mean, you know, like Mike had bought the team about 10 years earlier. And you, you know, Mickey, the story of the Red Wings. Yeah trying to get everything going and right. giving cars away and not drawing people right. and then getting Steve Eiserman in the draft and then, you know, getting some other players. They were coming along. It was, I mean, you know, getting, imagine getting Nick Lidstrom and Sergei Fedorov on late picks and Konstantinov and the team was really coming. It was a, it was a good team to go to because the ownership would do anything to win. Mm -hmm. The management was good. It was Jimmy DeVolano. Kenny Holland was doing some scouting, and he was the heir apparent to come in. We lost it. My first year, we had a good team. We could score again, but we 94? lost it. Yeah, we San lost. San Jose. Yeah, we got beat by... Uh, Jamie Baker off the boards. Yeah, but, yes. you know, we made a lot of moves when you think about it. What did you need? What do you think you needed? Goal-tending goal first. Yeah, whacked in 95. Yeah, the Devils yeah, embarrassed yeah. us in 95 they played by tight defense, de right? We, we had to play better defense. Right. And then, you know, I think, I think when you look at it, we, we already had Sergey, and we had uh, Latimer. And then, don't forget, my, I think it was my first or second year, Slava Kozlov, they've got him out of Russia, and he came and started in the Adirondack uh, for a few games, for a couple of weeks. So he, he, right away, we brought him up. Yeah. And... I think the next year, Slava Fatisov was sitting in the stands with the Devils. He was like number eight. He came along, and then uh, then it, that made it easy because he kept bugging us about Le Larry Onoff wants to come to Detroit. Yeah. And, and, you know, we had a lot of right wingers, but we got Igor, and he had played yeah. against us with San Jose. Right. So we, we knew how, how good he was. And that, that started the next... Uh, like the five Russians started, we we were careful with them, yeah. but we you know we also got guys like Draper, Maltby, McCarty, Koser. They're important to your team because sure. they, they 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 know how to work. Um, you go on the road to play a game against a team that's not strong. Your your stars aren't aren't there. Some shifts, but those guys are there all the time. Did you? I've often wondered. Did you have to teach your star players to respect? your grinders, to understand how important they were for this old team? Well, I think it sort of comes from the room. You know, we were so fortunate <clears throat> to have players that knew they knew how to play. And uh, when, as long as you treat them fairly and you treat them honestly, I mean, that was always what I tried to do is, yeah. and I'm not going to try to fool them. And, you know, but I'm going to be the truth. I'm going to tell the truth, too, you know. And But we were lucky to have a, a group of players that worked hard and it, it started because we all, as a coach, or uh, you always felt the ownership of the team wanted badly to win. And whatever it would take for the team to win, they would do it. Was the Shanahan deal the key to that 97? Well, uh, that was an interesting started in one. November, well, basically. Well, what happened, though, well, what, the first game he made. He made the first game. But, see, Keith Primo was, was going to be heir apparent to coming along. He was a big centerman. Yeah. Where are you going to get a big centerman that's tough, you know? And all of a sudden, the contract problem. And uh, I remember I wasn't doing contracts, but Jimmy was trying to do them, and Mr. Illich was involved. And, and I know that Mr. Illich said, 
let them sit. Like, we're not, we're not trading them. Because, you know, because he was that, that type of a player. We can't sign him. We're not close to it, but we're, gonna, we're, not, gonna, we're not gonna give him away. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, it was in something that Jim Rutherford said, Shanahan is available in a trade. So it wasn't an easy trade for us, but we, we added a player that could score goals. He was tough as nails. He could, he could play any way he wanted, you know? And he came in and I, I think he gave our team that little bit extra that we, you know, sure when you're that close yeah. and he was a good playoff player. So, uh, you know, that, that was another trade that helped a lot. So those disappointments in 93, 94, 95 with the Devils, Three 96. In Three in a row. The conference finals against Colorado. Uh, they were sort of stepping stones and building blocks to what happened in 97. How about the, the melee on March 26th of 97? And you were in the middle of it with Mark Crawford, <laughs> all that stuff going on. How okay. much, when you look back, did that have to well, do with the I can go thing? back the year before, the 96 team. We went into Montreal. I'm sure you went with us to do the game. We beat them 11 to 2 or 11. I remember Patrick won night. Yeah. Larry Allen cuts in. What a spot. Rebound score. Lock picked up by Rialto. Oh, and score. Oh, scores. Oh, scores. When you look back, it's easy to criticize. But they were so upset. This was such a such a big problem, you know, yeah. that they they traded him to. And that was the piece that Colorado needed. Sure. So that hurt us in 96. Right. But, you know, it's sort of our own fault because we scored 11 goals yeah, right, and right. got them upset. Yeah. But no, then a 97 team uh, put it all together, you know, and you're right, the, the, the Colorado. It was so emotional. Yeah, and, and you know, we both had Hall of Fame players. Right. We, we didn't have a lot of, there wasn't a lot of, it's not like teams that you could go back in history like Boston and Philadelphia that would, you could fight everybody. We, we weren't that kind of teams. But yeah. that 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 that, uh, that did, but that was a that was a tough injury for Chris Draper. And now Darren McCarty gets his shots in at Claude Lemieux, and look who came all the way out to try to help Patrick Waugh. Wingspan on Valley Sports he is presented by Coors Light, made to chill. Red Wings. Trying to get the sweep. Three seconds left. Into the zone. The Detroit Red Wings on the standing pass. Two minutes. Scotty, seven Stanley Cups as a coach. Are you coaching next year? Well, this makes it kind of tough. Scotty Bowman's got his skates on. You pull it off in 97, and then Vladdy gets in the accident. How much, if you look back, did that have? To, to play into the next year, and our guys really rallying behind that whole situation. Well, it was such a big loss. Yeah. It happened six days after we won the right. cup. Right. I don't think anybody that summer really felt, uh, you, sure, you're a Stanley Cup champion. Couldn't enjoy it? No. When you're a coach, there's the professional side that you have to do your job, and there's the personal side, because they are people. And the team pulled together. And uh, that was a wonderful uh, team because, uh, you know, Oz, Chris Osgood led us to the, to the cup against Washington. Right. And, you know, when you play in the Stanley Cup final and you win four straight, you, you, you got to play good hockey. For sure. You're not going yeah. you know, to fluke. They have won two in a row. The Detroit Red Wings of 1998 are Stanley Cup champions. You know, we always felt the family atmosphere. That's what I always found about Detroit. Yeah. That was what, when you're with a team, and there are teams in the league that are owned by corporations, I'm sure the players don't have the same feeling sure. as you have when you know that the ownership is thinking of anything, anything we can do for the team. All these years, does any one moment stand out for you? Yeah, it's the last year I coached, Mickey, because I had thought about it for about three years before that, but I said, I'm out. I made my mind up at that time, but I yeah. didn't. I didn't want any. I didn't want any circus or anything. I was saying, "Oh, it's his sure. last year." Was it nostalgic even then to to, to know you weren't coming back and they gave you the cup? Eiserman handed you the cup and all that stuff. Well, I don't. You know, I'm pretty private that way. But I went to Paul Boyer, and I, and I, I, you know, I trusted Paul. I said, "Paul, 
depends. I think I was a one goal game, and I said, get my skates ready because I'd like to try. I never was able to get on the ice as a player, right? but I, I'd like to get my skates and, and, and put them on for the last time. And he got them all ready for me. And I waited and waited until Brendan Shanahan <clears throat> scored the empty net goal. I, right. I don't know how long left. What, 10, 15, maybe 20 seconds? Yeah, not many. Yeah. yeah. Steve Eisenman. Scotty, and Scotty Bowman is going to get the cup first. Yeah. Being the, the straw that uh, stirred the drink here from 93 on, what would you hope to be your legacy uh, for Detroit hockey fans? Well, I coached in a lot of cities. Um, started, like I mentioned, in St. Louis. Went to Buffalo, Montreal, Pittsburgh. But my longest tenure was Detroit. My legacy here would be that it, it showed what a team that works together with, with the ownership, with the management, if, it, if you work together, you've got a better chance to, to go all the way than if you don't. And I, I've always been trying to talk about your team, and team is first. First of all, I told you before the game about shooting the puck. Make sure it's on the net. And said, uh, do you want to interview, or do you want to come to Detroit? I decided to do that. That was the best move I ever made.